You are listening to The Real Faith Stories Podcast, interviews with people who chose to boldly follow their faith. I'm your host, Brian Robinson. Now, let's meet our guests and hear their story. Dan, welcome to Real Faith Stories. It is great to have you on the show today. Thank you, Brian. It's a real pleasure to be here. Well, I was reading over the notes you provided to me after we initially spoke, and there was one key sentence that jumped out, and that was the answer to the question, in what specific ways has your story impacted your life? And you said, I now understand the peace that passes all human understanding. Wow. I mean, everyone wants peace. So let's start at the beginning. And if you would, Dan, share a little bit about your backstory, kind of where you grew up, your history in the real estate business, and then this major shift that occurred that led to this peace that passes all understanding. With pleasure. Yeah. So I, I was born in Los Angeles, California, and I was adopted as an infant. And my parents raised me in the city of Orange in Orange County, California, kind of right by close to Disneyland. I'm in my 50s, so grew up at a wonderful time in Orange County when it was still rural. And my parents were both Christians. They weren't very dedicated Christians, but they believed in the Lord and they attended church every week. And I'm so thankful that they did. They brought me to a Baptist church, and it was there that I met a youth leader when I was about 14. And right around 15, he led me to Christ. And that's how I got started. And it was very profound for me. It was real. I was regenerated. I was born again. And I took my faith seriously. I just really thank God I avoided all the conflict that you get as a teenager with all the things you can get involved in with partying, girls. And I was able to avoid all that because of Jesus, not because of me, but because he really had took my life over. And it was very important to me. So, and I just want to throw a shout out to people that are raising children, because I am, I have five children, and it's so important to train them in the Lord, to show them the way, to to put them in situations where they can hear about Jesus, because my parents just brought me to church, and here God did a redemptive work in my life, and I'm so grateful that I was, you know, shown this and introduced to Christ and church. So I just want to encourage listeners to do that with their children. It's so important. So I grew up very traditional family. I had an older sister. She wasn't my biological sister. So I was kind of an only child, played sports, enjoyed, but it was really becoming a Christian at 15 had a profound impact in my life. I got involved with our church group, went on short-term mission trips. I went to the Philippines when I was 20, and I did a four-month short-term mission trip in the summer, and it uh, just changed my life. I went to Spain for three months on a short-term mission trip, and then to Mexico for three months on a short-term mission trip, and decided I might want to go into mission work. So it just really changed my life getting to know the Lord. My folks wanted me to be a medical doctor because every good family wants to have a doctor in the family. So (laughs) I went to pre-medical school at University of California of Irvine. And uh, halfway through that pre-med program, my father died. I was about 21. And I decided at that time, that's not really what the calling of my life was. Kind of broke my mother's heart because she wanted to, her son to be a doctor, but she understood later on. So I shifted gears, finished my pre-med degree, and then I went to Biola, which is used to be called Bible Institute of LA. Now it's called Biola in La Mirada. It has a seminary called Talbot School of Theology. So I, right after I got my bachelor's degree at UC Irvine, I went to Talbot and I got a Master of Divinity degree thinking I might do mission work of some kind. And uh, during that time, I got married and, and decided as I was going through that process that I was really called to go into the workplace, to have my own company. So about the same year that my oldest daughter, who's 30 now, was born, I started in the real estate business, that is buying distressed property, remodeling, and then selling. They call them flippers now, but in my day, we were just called investors. They call them flippers now. So So you get out of Biola, you get your master's in divinity, and then you're feeling called to go into the world of business. And then you decide to get involved in real estate 
with these distressed properties. How did you get led into that? I'm curious. My father had and mother had rental property. And when my father passed away, I had to manage it. So I was already accused to fixing and we did most of the work ourselves. So I knew about all that. And a little job I had while I was in seminary, one of the guys who was also in seminary worked at the same company. And he had a fellow that he knew that was taught basically how to buy and sell property. And so I kind of met with him and really decided this is kind of what I prayed about. It took me about a whole year to pray and seek the Lord. And I just felt like this was the direction God would want me to go. And so that's kind of how I got into buying and selling. How long has your career been in that? Yeah, so I started in 1992. And so this is my 30th year. Okay. You had a major transition that occurred. I don't know how many years in was it? So when I started my company, the first 10 years, I was really honoring the Lord. I was successful and God blessed. And as I look back now, he reminded me that was me all the time. It wasn't you. But I kind of got flip-flopped and thought it was all about me. And I thought I was special, that maybe I had the Midas touch. So about 10 years into it, I took the reins back over, frankly, of my life. My former wife became profoundly mentally ill, and it disturbed me. And she had to be hospitalized, and eventually she had to be institutionalized. So it really affected me profoundly And I questioned God. I didn't question my faith, but I just said, hey, I guess in the small things of life, maybe I'm supposed to take care of all that and you just handle the big things. So I kind of got off course about 10 years into my business and I started basically running the business myself. I became, you could say, God of my own life again. It was just something that I kind of slowly fell into. Was this in conjunction with the experience you were having with your wife at the time? Did those two events coincide? Yes. The event with my former wife was probably what caused me to stray. Instead of doubling down with Christ, I decided that I guess I'm going to have to take the reins over and figure out these things because my former wife just wasn't getting healed. I was just relying on myself and my own ability, still doing well in the business because I had experience and knew what to do, but I wasn't doing it in the power of the Holy Spirit and honoring Christ and really building his kingdom. I was building my own. So that happened for about, about 10 years. And then I got remarried. I met a gal through my attorney. So I married a gal from St. Petersburg, Russia. That was around 2005. And that really positively impacted my life. I had three young children and I was raising them on my own. And she came and was gracious enough to help me with that process. And then we had two of our own. So I have five children and it kind of a blended family, but it, God worked it all out. So it's a beautiful thing now. But come around about 2016, things weren't going well in the business. I was struggling. What normally would be good deals and easy became difficult. And I look back now, and as I have recommitted my life to Christ, it was Jesus putting the brakes on, saying, I can't allow you to continue taking credit for what I'm doing. And so I'm going to stop. I'm going to shut the tap off. It wasn't shut off completely, but it was enough to get my attention. There are a lot of lawsuits in distressed property purchasing, because you can imagine at an auction, nobody's selling their their property happily. But there were things just coming out of the woodwork that never happened before, and, and God was getting my attention. And so finally, in 2018, I got down on my knees, and I confessed that I had become God of my own life, and I rededicated my life to Christ. And at that time, I started getting involved in a small group. It was called FCCI, Fellowship of Christian Companies for Christ International. And then that morphed into this group that's now called JC CEOs or Jesus Christ CEOs. And that had a profound impact on my growth and my maturation. And so in 2018, I changed the way I was doing my business completely. I was still doing the same thing, still buying and selling distressed property. Before I was doing it for me and my kingdom. And after 2018, I was all about Jesus Christ and his kingdom. And it took me several years. I redeveloped my company, renamed it, It used to be called Daybreak Group. Now it's called CREI, Christ Real Estate Investments. And I just put it right out there. At first, I was a little nervous about it because my competitors and everybody know now. And I thought, well, they're going to make fun of me. Or I just finally said, don't care. I'm just going to do what I have to do. And I did. And they're actually respectful. They want to 
partner with me. Let me pause there, Dan, and just circle back to when you got on your knees in 2018 and rededicated your life to the Lord. What was it that happened afterwards? Was there any particular event, connection that occurred when you made that decision? At that time, there was a big weight taken off of my shoulders because when I took back control of my life, there's a lot of pressure with that. I didn't go to drinking or any of those things. I just wasn't sleeping well. I'd go to bed late, get up early. It, you know, I carried a lot of weight on me because I was the one in charge. And in 2018, I relinquished that power or control over the business to Christ. And so at that time, I experienced a lot of peace. Right away, was able to sleep soundly again and knowing that, hey, I've, I'm going to allow Jesus to take responsibility for this and not me. It's one thing to pray that prayer, and then it's another thing to release the care, but then the care is over there in the corner saying, pick me up again, right? Yes. So when you, when you had those moments of the cares wanting you to pick them up again, how did you deal with that? Well, this is where I got a lot of help through the coordination of JC CEOs. It's, a, it's an online training program for owners of companies. At the time, I was going through the, their two modules, about 20 lessons each. Uh, they take probably six months to go through. After the first module, you dedicate your life in writing to Jesus Christ. So I had just done that. And so I took it seriously. I waited a couple of days because, and I even heard the still small voice from the Holy Spirit saying, look, you don't have to do this. I only want you to do it if you mean it and you want to do it. I'm mm. not forcing you to do anything. So if you want to go back to your old way of doing things, hey, you can. I'm not restraining you. I'm not, I don't have a gun to your head. This is your choice. And I said, no, this is what I want. I became born again when I was 15 and I want to enter back into that same style of living. And so that's what really helped me. Then I went through module two and you in writing, you give ownership to Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, God to control your company and literally allow him to be the master overseer of your company. And you fall in third position. It's Jesus, Holy Spirit, then Dan. Mm. And I did that. And, and I was with a group of business owners that really helped flesh that out. So not only did I make those commitments personally and corporately, with my business, but I had a group of people that were, they weren't holding me accountable. They were just going through the process with me. The group wasn't, hey, we're, we want to hold each other accountable. That's what the Holy Spirit's for. The Holy Spirit will keep you on track. <laughs> I don't need to, but I want to, I want to walk through this process with you. And that's what really built me up and made this decision a bedrock. And so while it was a process, it became real. And those cares, like you said, that are over there in the corner, I was able to really give them to Christ and say, hey, this is your company now. Mm -hmm. So freeing. This is your company. You handle those problems. Literally, those big cares, those big worries, those big things that would have kept me up at night, worrying, trying to figure out how am I going to solve this unsolvable problem. That's your job. I'm going to get up in the morning. I'm going to I'm going to honor you first first part of my day. I'm going to honor you throughout the day, and I'm going to let you handle the big things. I'm just going to show up. I'm going to be in participation. I'm going to be in attendance. I'm going to do what you've called me to do. I'm not going to lay around. I'm going to work, but I'm going to let you be the master owner of this, of the company and of me, and I'm just going to follow your lead. When those cares would come up, you would just say, Jesus, these are yours. That's exactly right, and I really meant it. And at first, it seems... A little bit, honestly, like, hey, this is hocus pocus. Come on now. But I just went through the process and I was faithful and I went at it with a whole heart. My heart was in it. Your heart has to be open and pliable to Christ for him to use you or else he's just not a, he's not a slave owner. He's really a patient, good God. And yeah. so these cares, I would literally give to him and say, hey, and I knew in my spirit that these big problems or these big issues, they were bigger than I could ever handle. But I took credit for him, but finally I gave him back to him. And he, one by one, would, would come up with the solution to what some of them were unsolvable problems. And I was just, I was like, wow, you know, it I can tell you, Brian, it really works. It works. When you let Jesus have the driver's seat of your life and of your business, and you mean it, he will take it because he's serious about it. He wants to own it. He wants to operate it. But he will then take you where he wants you to go. And it's a great ride. So let me ask you this, Dan. 
previously, when you would grind on a problem and start thinking through all the different ways you might be able to solve it, then you give these problems to the Lord after everything shifted. Did you find yourself thinking about them specifically, or was the Lord basically downloading things to you that gave you the direction you were seeking for the answer? What did that look like? What I would do when I had unsolvable problems is, and again, I'm just going to be very honest, I would manipulate things. I wouldn't cheat, lie, or steal, but I would do things that weren't right because it, it was expedient. And Jesus said, hey, my company, we don't do those things anymore. We do it, we do it my way, which is honorable, straightforward. And so I was in a lawsuit and I could have lied about things and created documents. And Jesus said, no, we do things differently now. You simply show up, be in attendance, do it the right way, and I will defend you. And so what happened, which was a big lawsuit, he's defended me. He's working it all out. I mean, I would have been up every night over this particular lawsuit, but now he's handling everything. He woke me up one morning early and said, hey, I'm handling this for you. And I said, yes, you are. It's a miracle. And he even said, through a still small voice, you can hear Holy Spirit when you're quiet and you listen. And he said, I've got this handled. You could have your dog be the attorney for this lawsuit and everything's going to work out okay. <laughs> and I said, thank you. I wanted that. I needed that. And it's working out. He's, I mean, miraculously. And I didn't manipulate. That's the difference. That Brian, that's the difference. I would have manipulated before. I didn't manipulate. I kept it straightforward and it really didn't w- bode well for me, but I just stayed the path. I just did the right thing. I didn't create anything. I didn't lie. I didn't manipulate anything. I just put it right out there the way it was. And he honored himself by saying, hey, this is my property anyway. I'm the owner. And he comforted me because he said, look, I want you to understand you weren't sued. I was. I've been sued. Oh. And so, so I'm sorry, I'm emotional about it. I will defend myself. And he has. And it's been miraculous. The lawsuit's been put on hold now because the judge deemed that it was so frivolous. And I never would have thought that something like that could happen. In the natural, it wouldn't. But in the supernatural, it did. And so those are the differences. That's one example of what's happened to me right right in front of my face. And it was so powerful for me. You know, lawsuits are scary. They're difficult. I've been in a lot of them, so I know the process. So I'm not as afraid of them. But if you get sued for the first time, it can be very terrifying. And to hear Jesus Christ through Holy Spirit come to you and say, hey, I've got this. You can hire your dog to be your attorney and everything's going to be okay. I mean, those are comforting words. Then for him to say, it wasn't you who got sued. I've been sued. This is my property. I own it. And I've been sued and I will defend myself. Wow. I mean, that changes everything, Brian. Well, this speaks to what you said was your biggest takeaway about the peace that passes all human understanding. That's what you have experienced because you gave everything over to him. You truly gave it over. You didn't put it on the table and pick it back up or put it on the table and see if anyone's watching and then throw it on your, in your backpack and carry it again, right? That's correct. Yep. I call that, I call that going back to Egypt. <laughs> I'm not going back to Egypt. So tell me how your business shifted when you dedicated it to the Lord. Well, I... Gave him master ownership of the company, and in 2020 is when I changed the name from Daybreak Group to CREI, Christ Real Estate Investments. And that year, we bought our biggest deal, profit and percentage-wise, and there was a right of redemption. And very frankly, in the natural, Brian, it should have been redeemed. There was a window of three, three to four months where the old owner could redeem the property, but they didn't. When you say redeem the property, what does that mean exactly for those that aren't in real estate? It means that they can buy the property back up in this case, because it was during COVID, they gave them six months instead of the typical time in Orange County is three months. They gave them three extra months. And I thought, oh, there you go. It's over now. But no. So so Christ has blessed his own company with phenomenal deals that normally would never happen. I bought a commercial property. It turned out to be enough profit for the whole year. And I was able to bring in a couple other investors who got blessed. And one of the investors' wives just retired. And that the profit they made covered her whole salary for a year. (laughs) It just, I mean, God's just, he's providing and he's doing the work. 
And I'm not grinding it out. I'm hustling. I'm working harder than I've ever worked, but I'm not working in a grinding fashion. I'm just showing up. I'm just doing what he's asked me, asking me to do. Tell me the difference, Dan, between the way you were getting leads before versus now. Is there any difference? Well, I still use the same lead bases, but now I pray over everything and I ask, hey, what, which ones do you want me to pursue? And so I'm being directed very clearly to go on certain deals. And there's some deals, very frankly, Brian, in the natural or the old way I would do things, I would buy them, but a Holy Spirit saying, no, that's a hold. I'll give you an example. I was going to buy one and it made a lot of sense. It was a very profitable deal. I was praying with our group of guys and I just sensed the Holy Spirit said, no, I, I don't want you to buy this one. Well, I happened to be right by the auction. So I didn't go get a cashier's check to buy and do all that, but I went just to watch. I get to the auction and... 10 minutes before there was an opening bid. It was ready to go to auction. I get to the auction. It's been canceled. It was paid off. And I'm like, <laughs> hey, you already knew all this. If you really think about it, God, Christ, Holy Spirit created the whole world, everything in it. We know that from Hebrews 11, three, he created it from the unseen things and he made everything we see. So he knows everything from the start to the finish to the future. So why not allow him to operate his will, his way, because he already knows the beginning to the end. In JCCEOs, we call it the unfair competitive advantage. When you allow Jesus to run your company, he's going to do things because he already knows what needs to be done according to his will. So I'm just trying to get into alignment with that. And that's my job. What do you feel, based on your experience in this group, is the biggest hesitation CEOs have, business owners have, of completely turning their business over to him? I can tell you, for me, because I didn't for a while, very frankly, we like to be in control. We like to run the show. In my case, there was some ego there. I liked to be the boss. I liked to make the picks. I liked to do the deals. So I think there's that. And I think there's a fear that if I do, it's all going to fall apart. You know, like I told Lee Ray Heine, I said, hey, I'm going to try this, but it's probably hocus pocus. And I'm not expecting, unfortunately, I, my faith was low, but I, you know, we'll see how it goes. I'm not expecting a whole <laughs> lot. But Christ did exceedingly abundantly, like he says in Ephesians, beyond all that I could ever ask or think, because that's the way he operates. There's no reduction or division. Everything is multiplication with Jesus. Everything's growth. Everything's abundance. And that's how his kingdom is. And so that's how he's running his company. And such a pleasure to be in the back seat, letting him take charge and take me where he wants me to go. It's my job to to get in alignment with him and not allow my will. But so, so business owners, it's hard. I didn't want to give up control. Number two, there's fear that if I do, things are all going to fall apart. And it's is the yielding or the death process. It's not easy, Brian. It's, it is death. And whether it's a d- dying to self, it, it, it's painful. It's not, you know, it's not simple. It's not, you just wake up one morning and you just say, okay, I'm not going to do it the old way. I'm going to do it the new way. It's a process and it's hard. It's easier to do things, frankly, the old way. Yeah. Instead of dying to yourself and crucifying the flesh and, and allowing the spirit to lead and control and rule and reign. That's why it took me so long to wake up. Well, tell me about the peace that you're experiencing now, how has that shifted? I'm trying to gather words for it. It's magical, Brian, because I'm not pursuing this peace, right? It's just, it's being sprinkled on me. Holy Spirit is just giving it to me. So what it looks like in my life is I all of a sudden don't have these big desires for stuff, the big house, the great car, all the wonderful stuff that you can buy. Just all I want is enough to get by. And all of a sudden, I want the, his kingdom to grow. I want him to be glorified. Let me tell you, when your pursuits are for the next big deal or the, the next house on the hill or the fanciest car or whatever, it takes all the pressure off. And you can just say, hey, I've got everything I need. I'm just so happy to be right in where God wants me to be in his will. And another thing He's teaching me how to operate in his kingdom. Like like JCCEO says, our job is to bring heaven to earth. We want to restore work to the way it was in the garden before the fall. And so all of a sudden now, work's a pleasure for me. Work is fun. Work's thrilling. It's still difficult because I'm in the world, but not of it. But all of a sudden, it's enjoyable. I'm like a kid again. You know how Mm. kids are? 
everything's possible for a kid, right? Yeah. A kid has no limitations in their mind. And you know what? That's the God we serve, the God of a child who has no limitations. And that's where I'm at now. I'm like a kid again. I mean, I'm enjoying it. It's fun for me. And I'm learning how to operate in God's kingdom. And I'm an avid golfer and tennis player. And God showed me very supernaturally what golf is like in the kingdom of heaven. He says, by the way, there will be golf. And I said, oh, oh fantastic. <laughs> he said, the difference is you're going to want the people you're playing with to play as good or better than you. And all of a sudden, when you do that, it's so fun, Brian. All the competition is you're hoping it make that shot. Whereas before you might think, I'll miss it. I, and I'm learning how to play golf in the kingdom of God, where I'm literally wanting the three other guys or gals, whoever I'm playing with, I want them to do well. I play tennis. I want them to play their best tennis. And if I happen to win, hey, glory to God, but I'm enjoying the process now. And he's showing me this is the way the kingdom of God's going to be. You're going to be you're going to be more interested in 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 other people than you are your own results. There's so much beauty in that. There's so much power in wanting great things for other people. And then you just come along. You're just along for the ride. So God's just opening up his kingdom to me and he wants to bring his kingdom to earth like it is in heaven. I'm thinking of the scripture that godliness with contentment is a means of great gain. Amen. And that's what you're talking about. The contentment yes. is such great gain for your life. It's so precious and powerful. Oh, yeah. yeah. Take what people do to, in the world to try to get that contentment, that peace. They turn to prescription drugs and all kinds of other things that just ruin your life. And instead, it's available to us through the Holy Spirit. And it's real. How can people contact you or find out more about your specific business in real estate? I have a website, CREI.org. Or my phone number, they can call. I'd be happy to spend a half hour with them talking about anything they're interested in. I'm at area code 714-803-0004. And I'm happy to share if they have troubles with real estate. There's no charge. I'd love to walk them through the process. Jesus is my boss now. So I, I'm a different man. Things are all together different and new. I love it. As we finish here, Dan, I'd love to have you pray for our listeners, please. I'd love to. Oh, Heavenly Father. Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, three in one, we thank you that you created heavens and earth from nothing. You spoke them into existence. And this is your world, Lord. This is not Satan's world. This is not even our world. This is your world. And everything in it is yours. You're in complete control of everything going on, even if it's not good things. You're not the author of bad things, but you are in control of all things going on. You are sovereign. And we want to lift you up. We want to worship you. We want to praise you. And I ask that you will enlighten business owners to put you first, to take their burdens, to take them off their back, to release the stress and the struggle and say, hey, these are for you, Jesus, to handle as they commit their lives to you, as they die to self, and then as they give their companies to you. We ask that you would show them what the peace that surpasses all human understanding, that you will rest them. You say, come to me, all you who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest or I will rest you. Lord, please rest business owners who are carrying too much weight, that are struggling because they're trying to do these things on their own. And you're asking them to give up that control, that authority, that power to you because you are the master owner of all things. And so we want to give back to you what's rightfully yours, not only our lives, but our businesses, our families, all the things that we're involved in, because they are yours anyway. And we want to walk with you. We want to restore business the way you created it in the garden, where Adam and Eve spoke to you freely. They interacted with you all day long, and their work was a pleasure because they weren't burdened down with sin and desires that were wrong. They were instead wanting to honor you. So we pray that we can bring heaven to earth through our work and through our businesses, through our families, and through, even through our leisure time, whether it be tennis or golf or anything that people do, that they can bring you the glory and allow your kingdom to reign and rule on earth as it is in heaven. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Dan, thanks for sharing your story. I loved it. Thank you, Brian. It was a pleasure. I really am happy to do it. Hey everyone, thanks for listening. 
Please make sure you subscribe to the show and share this with someone you believe would be encouraged and motivated by these stories. Until next time, I'm Brian Robinson reminding you that the greatest decision you could ever make is to ask Jesus Christ to become the Lord of your life. If you haven't done that, read Romans chapter 10, verses 9 through 11. Thanks again for listening.